Imagine working 100 meters beneath the sea, a hostile place where sunlight never reaches and where temperatures can plunge to a few degrees above freezing. All your off hours are spent in a tiny, crammed metal tube, breathing a mixture of gases that makes it hard for you to speak and constantly saps heat from your body, giving you a permanent chill. Here, you can eat a meal delivered through a tiny hatch or catch a few hours of sleep before your next shift begins and it's time once again to plunge back into the abyss. Now imagine living like this for months at a time, unable to escape your little sealed world without facing certain and gruesome death. Welcome to the strange world of saturation diving, one of the most dangerous and well paid jobs in the world. But first, let's see what is saturation diving. Developed as a part of the US Navy's Sea Lab program in the mid-1960s, saturation diving is a technique that allows humans to live and work in extreme depths for an extended period of time. Specifically, it is designed to overcome the danger of decompression sickness, better known as the bends. As a diver breathes pressurized air at depth, nitrogen gradually dissolves in their bodies. If they then ascend to the surface too quickly, the pressure drop can cause this nitrogen to come out of the solution and form tiny bubbles, which can cause crippling joint pains, strokes, paralysis, and even death in certain cases. To avoid this, divers must ascend to the surface slowly, taking decompression stops at regular intervals to allow the nitrogen to be slowly and safely expelled from the bodies. However, for long, deep dives like those required in the offshore oil industry, this technique becomes infeasible and divers must have to spend far more time decompressing than working during each shift. For example, a dive of more than an hour below 100 meters depth would require more than 50 hours of decompression. Instead, in saturation diving, the divers spend their entire working shift under pressure, spending their off hours in a diving chamber, pressurized equal to their working depth, and traveling to and from the job site in a pressurized diving bell known as a transfer capsule. This practice is based on the fact that after a certain amount of time, a diver's body becomes fully saturated with nitrogen and cannot absorb anymore meaning that no matter how long they stay below, the required decompression time remains the same. Thus, rather than making multiple dives and decompressions, saturation divers only decompress once at the end of their shift, greatly reducing the risk of decompression sickness. The downside is that this single decompression can take up to two weeks to complete. There are other hazards including nitrogen narcosis, a disorienting euphoria caused by breathing nitrogen at a pressure that divers describe as being similar to alcohol intoxication. Oxygen also becomes toxic below around 80 meters, so saturation divers must breathe trimix. It's a gas mixture in which much of the oxygen is replaced with helium. This comes with its own problem. Not only does helium alter the human voice, <laughs> forcing divers to wear electronic peace scramblers to be understood, but it also has poor thermal properties wiping away body heat and leaving divers perpetually chill. Breathing helium at depths below 300 meters can also produce severe neurological effects known as high pressure nervous syndrome. But the greatest danger in the saturation diving is the high pressure environment itself, as a group of four British and Norwegian divers discovered in 1983 in a gruesome event known as the Bifur Dolphin Accident. Bifur Dolphin was a semi-submersible offshore rig built by Eckert Engineering in 1974 in Austria. Weighing 3,000 tons, 
and manned by a crew of 100, it was capable of drilling in waters up to 460 meters in depth. To allow construction and maintenance of the wellhead at these depths, the rig was equipped with a sophisticated saturation diving system built by the French firm Comex. In November 5, 1983, the rig was drilling in the Frigg gas field in the Norwegian sector of the North Sea. At 4 a.m., British divers Edwin Coward and Roy Lucas were resting in a dive chamber while Norwegian divers John Bergensen and Truls Hallowick were returning from their shift in the transfer capsule. The capsule was hoisted from the water and docked to the diving chamber by diving tenders William Kramer and Martin Saunders, allowing Bergensen and Hallowick to climb through a short trunk to join Coward and Lucas. The normal procedure was for the divers to first seal off the trunk and isolate the chamber so that the tenders could depressurize the capsule and detach it. But before Hallowick could close the chamber hatch, William Kramer released the clamp securing the capsule to the trunk. The results were immediate and horrific. The capsule violently decompressed and blasted away from the trunk killing Kramer and severely injuring Saunders. While inside the chamber, the pressure dropped instantly from 9 atmosphere to 1 in a second. Hallowick, crouching in the trunk, was blown apart, scattering body parts across the rib deck. One observer described finding his liver complete as if dissected out of his body, while parts of his spine were found 10 meters above the chamber on the rib deck. The other divers in the chamber fared little better. Autopsies of Coward, Lucas, and Bergensen revealed lumps of white fat clogging their arteries and veins, proteins that had cooked and precipitated as their blood flash boiled. Mercifully, all four divers are believed to have died instantly and painlessly. A subsequent investigation concluded that the accident was caused by human error. As William Kremen was killed in the incident, it is not known why he released the clamp before the chamber hatch was closed. Investigations summarized that a combination of fatigue and deck noise may have led to the fatal miscommunication. However, another key factor was the saturation diving system itself, which, despite recommendations from Norwegian oil and gas regulator DNV, had not been fitted with any interlocks pressure gauges or any other safety features to prevent the diving chambers from being disconnected while pressurized. This fault in the equipment was not mentioned in official accident report, and as much the families of the divers killed received no financial compensation. Believing the investigation to be a cover-up, the families formed the North Sea Divers Alliance, which they finally succeeded in suing the Norwegian government and obtaining a settlement in 2008, 25 years after the accident. The Bifurt Dolphin Rig is still in operation. Currently in contract with British Petroleum and saturation diving continues to be widely used in the offshore oil industry, consistently ranking amongst the most dangerous but well-paid jobs in the world, with many divers receiving $1,400 per day. While safety measures and accident rates have improved significantly since 1983, the Bifur Dolphin incident stands as a stark reminder of the dangers that always comes with living and working in extreme depths. And also, it stands as a stark reminder that a minute miscommunication or negligence can cause fatal accidents. So that's all for the video. If you like it, please give it a big thumbs up, share it and subscribe to the channel with the bell icon on and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.